Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 22, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, too, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. 3. Yea, if thou creest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, for if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. 8. He keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. 9. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. 11. Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. 12. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. 13. Who leave the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness. 14. Who rejoice to do evil, and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. 15. Whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. 17. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. 18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. 19. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. 20. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. 22. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Opening Sentence Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 5 My son, if thou wilt receive my words, and hide my commandments with thee, too, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. 3. Yea, if thou creest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, for if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures. 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. The introduction to the wisdom of God in chapter 1 began with the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 1 verse 7. Chapter 2 of Proverbs begins with the conditions required for understanding the fear of the Lord. The use of if and then indicates a conditional statement. The son has a free will, and he must make a choice. Not making a choice is to choose contrary to the will of God. If the son will receive God's words, then he will understand the fear of the Lord and come to know wisdom. Out of his mouth. Proverbs 2 verse 6 For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The identity of wisdom is the word that proceeds from God's mouth. Wisdom is a treasure that God keeps in reserve for the righteous. And who is the righteous? Them that walk uprightly. Proverbs 2 verse 7 He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Finding the theme two ways. In order to walk uprightly, a choice must be made to follow after God's words. Proverbs 2, 8-9 The Lord keepeth the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. 9 Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. The theme of Proverbs chapter 2 can be found by noting the repetitious use of the words way and path. The book of Proverbs and the entire Bible is written to teach the knowledge of the way of God and to warn against the way of his adversary. In the New Testament, Jesus spoke of these two ways. Just as wisdom cries out from the high places in chapter 1, Jesus speaks his sermon on the mount. Matthew 7 verses 13 to 14 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. One pathway leads to life, the other pathway leads to destruction. The very words of God, when received into the inner man, will keep and preserve the son from the way of the adversary, the evil man and the strange woman. Proverbs 2 verses 10 to 17. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, 
and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Eleven discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, twelve to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, thirteen who leave the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, fourteen who rejoice to do evil, and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, fifteen whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths, sixteen to deliver thee from the strange. Woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, seventeen which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. If the son will choose the path of wisdom, then he will be delivered from, one, the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things, and from, two, the strange woman, even from the stranger which flatters with her words. Both the evil man and the strange woman have something in common. The evil man left the path of uprightness, and the strange woman forsook the guide of her youth, forgetting her covenant with God. By this it is understood that both represent unbelieving Israel, who once walked in the wisdom and fear of the Lord. Israel is the only nation that ever had a covenant agreement with God. Exodus 34 verse 27 And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Psalm 147 verses 19 to 20 He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. 20 He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. The evil man speaks contrary to God. The strange woman uses flattery to seduce men to follow the path of death. The evil man will ultimately appear on earth as the Antichrist, as one who exalts himself and opposes God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 The strange woman will appear on earth as the great whore of the book of Revelation. She represents unbelieving Israel, who in utter apostasy will make a covenant with the Antichrist, worship him, and take his name as hers. She is the city of Babylon. In the same manner that wisdom is personified as a woman who teaches men to walk in the path of righteousness, the strange woman is the personification of the doctrine of the adversary who teaches and seduces men to walk in the ways of darkness. Pathway to Death Proverbs 2 verses 18 to 19 For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. Nineteen none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. Pathway to Life Proverbs 2 verse 20 That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. Conclusion Proverbs 2 verses 21 to 22 For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. 22 But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Israel is the son to whom Proverbs is addressed because Israel is the only nation to whom God promised a land and the inheritance of the earth. Genesis 12 verse 7 And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Exodus 32 colon 13 Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it for ever. Psalm 37, 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Matthew 5, 5 Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Summary If God's Son Israel will seek after wisdom with all his heart, if he will receive the words of God's mouth and apply them to his life, then God will keep his son in safety. The son will have no cause to fear the evil man or the strange woman. God will root the wicked out of the earth and give it as an inheritance unto his son as promised. Dispensational Consideration In today's dispensation of grace, saved members of the body of Christ, which is made up predominantly of former pagan Gentiles, were never given a promise of inheriting the earth. Instead, they have been promised an inheritance of heavenly places. Those who have personally trusted in the blood of Christ as the only acceptable sacrifice for sins are secure in Christ Jesus. 
There is nothing a saved person can do to be cut off or rooted out from the body of Christ. Believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22, Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 4.30. Life Application Although this chapter is written with Israel in view, much of this chapter can be applied today. Trusting in God's wisdom and believing in God's word is the key to choosing the pathway which leads to eternal life. Rightly dividing the word of truth is the key to understanding that Israel will reign eternally on earth while the body of Christ will reign eternally in heaven. The book of Proverbs contains very specific doctrine for the nation of Israel, but it also contains general principles of wisdom that will benefit everyone in all dispensations. Attempting to apply the doctrine of Proverbs to the body of Christ will cause confusion and doubt about one's salvation. Proverbs 3 verse 15 Wisdom is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. In the next chapter, wisdom is compared to a wife, who is represented by the virtuous woman of Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 2 Homework Concordance Search Find the words if and then use together in your favorite concordance to discover some of the conditional promises made to the nation of Israel. As you read through the Bible daily, when the word if is encountered, always look for the word then following. These words are always used together to indicate a conditional statement. Here is an example. Deuteronomy 11 verses 22 to 23 For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. 23 Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Note, the nation of Israel was under a conditional covenant with the Lord. Today we who are saved are not under a covenant. We are members of his body, the new creature. This is the mystery, Ephesians 3 verse 3, Colossians 1 verse 26, which is only spoken of by the Apostle Paul. It cannot be found anywhere in Scripture outside of Paul's epistles. Concordance Search Look up the word righteous in a concordance. How many times is it found in the King James Bible? List the top three books of the Bible in which the word, or other forms of the word, is found. Concordance Search Find the words path and way in a concordance. How many times are these words found in the book of Proverbs? Path and way Using a particular color highlighter or pencil, highlight these words as you read through the book of Proverbs. Concordance Search Use Blue Letter Bible to find the phrase Strange Woman. It is found only in Proverbs and the book of Judges. Judges 11 verses 1 to 2 define Strange Woman as an harlot. Dictionary Search After you have searched the King James Bible for the word forward in context, Use Webster's 1828 Dictionary to define it. Docs the dictionary's definition agree with the Bible? If not, disregard it. Concordance Search Using Blue Letter Bible Search for the evil man and the strange woman to learn more about their identity. Study these in context to understand the adversary of God and his tactics. Make a list in your notes of the words and phrases that are associated with the evil man and strange woman. Concordance Search Find the word covenant and read through a few of the references in the book of Genesis to define. What is a covenant? God made a covenant with Abraham. He confirmed it unto his son Isaac, and he confirmed it again to Isaac's son Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. God made a covenant with the nation of Israel in the wilderness after he brought them out of Egypt. It is important to note that the new covenant will be made with the same nation as the old covenant. Read, study Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 37 to confirm the new covenant being made with the same nation as the old covenant. Concordance search, find the word house in the King James Bible and in the book of Proverbs. How many times does it occur in Proverbs? Note the top three books of the Bible which reference house. Project, using the information you learned about the word house, make a two-column chart in your notes of the contrasting houses spoken of in the book of Proverbs. Concordance search, look for the term heavenly places, 
and note that it is only found in the epistles of the Apostle Paul. Compare, look up the following references to learn more about the heavenly inheritance of the body of Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3 and 2 colon 6, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 to 2, Philippians 3 verse 20, Colossians 1 verse 5 and 3 colon 1, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17 and 2 Timothy 4 verse 18. Concordance search, use blue letter Bible to search for the words land with give or gave in the King James Bible, particularly in the book of Genesis, to confirm that Israel was the only nation promised an earthly inheritance. Contrast, search the Apostle Paul's letters, Romans, Philemon, for any reference to land. How many results did you find?